Time once again for our weekly okay. update with the City of New Hope. The mayor is with us once again, Kathy Hempkin. Welcome, Mayor. How are you today? Hi, Dave. Just fine. Thank you. Thanks for being with us. We are both virtual here from our homes to bring you some news about the city. And let's begin with a little bit about City Hall hours, staffing, ways people can connect with all this happening with COVID. What is the latest way residents can stay in touch? Well, City Hall is really trying to stay open so we can do business. However, we're really suggesting to people that they do it uh, online, is it go on the computer? If they have to come in, they can, but that's, it's really better if they don't. So City Hall will be open on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of this week. And of course, Thanksgiving, they'll be closed. And then we don't know about next week. So anything mm -hmm. that you need to do, go online and, and do it. Our inspectors are working so they could do things virtually if they need to. So just keep in touch with us, but please do it online. All right, and that website again, newhopemn.gov. Let's move to the budget. We've talked about this quite a bit through the process. We're nearing the finish line. How are things looking for the budget for 2021? Well, the budget looks really good. We're doing a 3.4% levy increase, which really just is, is wages. Uh, the budget hearing is on the 7th of December. I believe we're going to be uh, in the council chambers to do that. I think it's going to be uh, shown. If you have a problem or you want to talk about something, you can always contact City Hall and ask to uh, be included in that meeting so you can express your opinion if you want to do that. Very good. Let's move ahead to community development. We've been following the progress of Windsor Ridge and things continue to move ahead. They do. Windsor Ridge is that, that project with 32 new houses. It's on the railroad tracks. Right next to that, to the east, uh, Crystal owns three lots. So one of those lots is being developed by Crystal and that home is sold. Uh, they just sold the ninth house at Windsor Ridge for three, a little over 390,000. And they've got a dozen that they're either pending on the sale on or they're in construction. So that project is moving right along. Fantastic. Let's go ahead to Zylon Avenue and people are gonna see a little bit of holiday cheer happening on Zylon. Who's behind all of this fun? Well, we hired Kenlon to come and put up the lights for us. They also do the, um, uh, the maintenance around the shrubs. They noticed that there were a few trees that were unhealthy on the east side of Zylon. So those will be removed and replaced in the spring. But those lights are up and they're on and it looks just kind of wintry wonderland if you go down Zylon. But yep, go at stop. night, go at yes. night because it doesn't look like anything during the day. <laughs> stop by and enjoy those lights. Back to COVID-19, a little discussion from the county end of how they are trying to help out with businesses. Tell us a little bit about their economic development push. Well, there's two numbers. One is 8 million, one is 12 million. The 8 million is the number I got from the city. The 12 million is the number I got from WCCO. Okay. So it's somewhere between those two. What they're doing, Hennepin County is doing, is they're offering a $15,000 grant to bars and, and restaurants who are struggling with COVID. But you have to go online and get to apply for that. You can do that now that that website's open and ready to take your application. If you get kind of lost in the process, uh, you can always call community development or go to the New Hope website and they'll guide you to uh, the website for Hennepin County to, to apply. But I encourage people to do that if, if they're struggling from COVID and now they're going to be closed for another four weeks, they might need some help. One other way the city is looking to help out with COVID is prorated liquor licenses. Explain a little bit what that means and how that could help some businesses out. Well, every year, uh, places that sell on sale liquor, like Pub 42, uh, they paid quite a lot in a liquor license. Well, they were closed down for 10 weeks where they couldn't sell alcohol. Uh, well, we figured that it'd be really nice if we could give them a break on that. So we're prorating their license for 2021. Well, now the governor said there's another four weeks they'll be shut down. Mm -hmm. So instead of prorating it for 10, we're prorating it for 14. We're really trying to help those businesses stay in business and give them a little boost when we can. It's not a lot of money, but it's it, every, every thousand dollars counts. I understand. Let's go ahead to scattered site housing. We keep you up to date on some of the projects and we've got one on Louisiana that you wanted to update residents on. Well, this is the, uh, the house that was right behind uh, Cook Automotive. So we tore that down, fixed the land so it looked like a nice park. And we sold that property for 69,000 to Great Homes. And they're gonna close on, the, on November 30th. And they plan to start work on December 1st. So 
So we might have a house there by spring. All right, keep your eyes out on that property. Business Networking Group, they continue to have some great meetings planned. Tell us about the next couple that they've got coming up. December 2nd at 8.30 is the next meeting. They took a little survey and people said that once a month was probably good. So what they're going to do is on the even months, that would be like uh, February, April, you know, the even months. They're mm -hmm. going to meet at 8.30 in the morning and that'll be virtual. And on the odd months, they're going to meet at 2 in the afternoon. And again, that'll be virtual. Okay. The last virtual meeting we had was very well attended. And you can get a lot of information from those meetings on where to apply for stuff, how to get, how to get grants. So we encourage people to stand by and, and sign in if you would. Very good. Go to the city's website, newhopemn.gov again to find out more ways to connect to the business networking group. Building permits, we wanted to talk about a business that's been in the news and possibly coming. And there have been a few things they're working on. That's the Pocket Square Cocktail Lounge. Give us that update. Well, the old malt and mud got sold to or got rented out again to Pocket Square uh, Distillery. And they're going to distill vodkas and gins. Well, obviously they can't do that now. So what they're doing is some work inside. The inspectors have been there and, and all the work they're doing is just fine. The only thing you'll notice that's different at the moment is they have to put a door in on the west side because by federal regulations, there has to be uh, two doors into a building like that. And so okay. they're in the process of putting a door in. I have no idea when they're going to be open and neither do they, but I do know that they are distilling as we speak. All right, you can keep up to date on that through these updates as well. Let's go to Public Works, talk a little bit about utility bills. That number continues to go down. How far down now? Well, it started at 407,000 and it's down to 187,000. So we're making progress. We'd really like it to be zero. Then we wouldn't have to put it on anybody's taxes. But these are utility bills that haven't been paid. And as people know, uh, the city buys the water and then we dole it out, if you will, to residents and businesses and we charge them for what they use. So when you don't pay your utility bill, if you're a business, that means the rest of the residents have to pick up the tab. We don't want that to happen. Mm -hmm. So we're trying really hard to get people to pay that bill that they owe. And if they can't, we'll put it on their taxes and we'll collect it that way. That is, that's just the fair thing to do for everybody. All right, we'll keep you up to date as that number continues to go down. Meadow Lake, we've talked about Meadow Lake and something that will happen in the wintertime. What is the progress on the drawdown of the lake? Well, the reason they wanted to do the drawdown is because the water quality in Meadow Lake wasn't good. And they sent a guy out in a boat and he estimated there was 30,000, or maybe it was 300,000, little itty bitty minnows. Because what happens is you dump your minnow bucket in and there's no predators, so pretty soon there's 30,000 minnows. <laughs> and of course, the quality of the lake was bad. So they were going to draw that down. The DNR, but first of all, the, some of the neighbors were worried about the turtles and relocating. And the best right. time, according to the DNR, is to draw that down in August and September, because then the turtles have a chance to move. We didn't get that done in time for the turtles to move. So now next August and September, we'll be doing the drawdown. They're also drawing down the northernmost lake and the golf course and because they need to put a pipe in to, to drain from that lake into Meadow Lake because they're all kind of connected. So this okay. winter, I believe they'll replace that pipe. All right, a lot of activity in that area. Let's move ahead to parks and recreation and things are slowing down a little bit here because of the closings on the state level. But we do want to mention the web address you see at the bottom of the screen, web track dot nhrecexpress.com. I understand, Mayor, this is the way people can still be involved. They can. So the In Motion, that was that magazine that used to come out and tell you all the classes that were available. And some of those classes are still available, but they're virtual. So you can go to that website and sign up for those classes. If you want to know what classes are being offered, uh, go. that's the website you would go to or go to the New Hope Rec Department and look at the in motion. You should have gotten a postcard in the mail okay. and that'll tell you how to get onto that website. If all else fails, always call the New Hope yeah. Park and Rec and they'll sure. help you. That's what I have to do. <laughs> and they'll help you get on and, and do what you're supposed to do. Now I have to read all the, the closings are just devastating. Sure. Right. So 
um, because of the, the governor's statement, the ice arena is closed entirely. So no practices, no skating, no rentals, nothing's being done at the ice arena as mm -hmm. far as the ice goes. They're considering taking the north sheet out, taking that ice out so they can do some repairs now because okay. they, they know that's going to be closed at least till the end of December, the 18th mm -hmm. of December. Sure. So they're thinking about doing that. They're doing some deep cleaning around because there's nobody, nobody in there. The community gyms, that's closed. All programs that were scheduled for in there are not going to be scheduled. Of course, the school's closed. So that gym is also closed. So if, if you haven't been contacted, you will be. And if you don't get contacted, again, uh, contact Park and Rec and find out if you had if you had a reservation for something at that gym, you want to make sure that, that it's not valid anymore. Sure. The golf course, however, can be open, but it's too cold. <laughs> there, were, there were people playing. It was 31 degrees. I'm sure. And there were people playing with gloves and hats and mittens and all that stuff. <laughs> but I think they're pretty much done now. So that's closed. And any, any events that were going to happen in the clubhouse, any rentals, those were those have all been um, shut down. Okay. So again, if you put some money down or you need to make sure that it's canceled, you can call Park and Rec and they'll, they'll contact them for you. Very good. Um, the the in the in person programming, any programming where they're touching somebody, uh, those are all canceled. Okay. However, there's some virtual program that that's going on, and that will continue to go on. They're doing the dance program by Zoom, so these kids in their tap shoes are in the dining room watching <laughs> a Zoom and they're practicing that way. There's um. Uh, there's a vir there's virtual programs, but there's activity packs. And there's the okay. winter challenge. Those two things, um, you can go through this in motion or call Park and Rec and they'll tell you how to get get a hold of that. The, the trails and the parks are open. However, I warn people that we're not sanitizing any of that playground right. equipment. So if you're going to take your kids there, uh, keep that in mind. Make sure you're wiping them down when they're we're done playing because we're not, we just can't sanitize them. Good so, advice. What's happening with Park and Rec is pretty nil. Yes, understand. Well, there is a place in town to keep up to date with what is coming up, and that's the reader board, and people should watch for that along Zion What are a few of the messages people will see here shortly? Well, first of all, there's a snowman snow sculpture contest. Mm -hmm. So if we ever snows again, <laughs> and I think it just might, yes. um, build a snowman, take a picture, send it to the Park and Rec Department at City Hall. And we have this snow structure contest put on by the Citizens Advisory Commission. And so they will judge these entries. And then sometime in March, they were going to close it like in January. But gee, we get that great snowman making snow in March. Right. So I think they're letting it go till the end of March. But if it snows, make a snowman, make a snow structure, and take a picture of it. Now, City Hall typically does a, a uh, clothing drive a coat drive, mm -hmm. and they also do a food drive and a toy drive toward this part of the year. Well, of course, you can't, those drives aren't happening. However, you can bring your things, your coats in. You can bring your food uh, into City Hall. They'll also take a check. Don't just put the check in the bin. You might want to go to the desk and give them the check, but that check sure. should be made out to the toy drive. The toys are going to uh, either Toys for Tots or to Prism. The food is mostly going to the near food shelf. So all of that food is going to a, a community within our community. Fantastic. A couple of final notes, the In Focus Photo Contest, chance for residents to vote for their favorite. How do they do that? Well, you can go, again, you can go online. People yep. should be getting really good to this going online. Business. Yes, I agree. <laughs> you can go online, you can view all the photos, uh, go on to the uh, New Hope, rec department and that would be slash in focus they'll show you all the photos you can vote mm -hmm. for one which is almost impossible to vote for right. one but that's the people's choice award if you don't want to do that you can certainly go into city hall and, and view them on a screen and then there's some ballots that you can vote in there so do do be sure to vote very good a final note today just an amazing number from the robbinsdale area school district tell us about that number and the impact that it has in the area well, because the schools are, are all doing uh, virtual learning or at home learning, one of the things that isn't happening is the kids weren't getting meals. 
And a lot of kids depend on that breakfast and lunch at school. Mm -hmm. So what the school district decided to do is to package up a breakfast and a lunch and have people drive by to pick that up. Last week, they, they hit their one million mark. Wow. One million lunches, uh, bundles had mm -hmm. been sent out. Now, if you're interested in doing that, go on to rdale.org and uh, look at nutrition services. There's a place where you click on that. It'll tell you the hours that you can pick up the food. Basically, right. you stay in your car, you drive by, um, they, they put the food in your car. It's, it's breakfast and lunch for your kids. There's also one of the schools, and I'm not sure, I think it's Sandberg, uh, does a 3.30 to 5.30 pickup for those who can't get there in the mornings. But um, we're, they're trying, they're trying really hard to get you not only fed, but um, taught. Yes, amazing service. Again, rdale.org to find out more about that. And as always, newhopemn.gov, place to find out about all of the things happening in the city of New Hope. Mayor Hampton, okay. thanks once again for your time. We look forward to talking to you again next week. Thanks, Dave. See ya.